Welcome to our tech. Today we're going to talk about the Serbo Mark II and how it connects up to the multi-tap as well as the Serb display. So first up we're going to talk about the Serbo Mark II which is what we're going to use for the Garmin system. It's important to pick the Serbo Mark II because it has an isolated CAN port but it also has a second configurable CAN port. So it previously on the Servo, it only had a VE CAN, could be configured to RBC, and then the other CAN port, which was BMS CAN, had to remain as BMS CAN. With the Servo Mark II, the markings on the Servo Mark II present a VE CAN 1 and a VE CAN 2, of which both are configurable. VE CAN 1 is going to be that isolated CAN port. This is also clearly marked out on the front of the device. But when you're going to purchase one, another clear indicator is the new box that they come in. So previously the servos came in a white box and now they've got a nice graphical box for the Servo Mark II. So to connect up the Servo Mark II into the RBC multi-tap, we're going to take a traditional Victron RJ45 and we're going to cut off one end of this. This is going to allow us to adapt this into a RVC multi-tap connector. And to do this, simply what we're going to do is strip the end of this cable, revealing all of the lines inside. You'll see all of these twisted pairs. And there are three connections that we need to make on this. Two of these are gonna be cut off initially, which is gonna be the solid blue and blue and white pairing, as well as the solid orange and orange and white pairing. So let's do that. So snipping these off with a nice pair of flush cuts is gonna get it really nice and close down at the base. For the Victron side of things, your can high and can low is gonna be your brown and brown white twisted pair. Brown and white is going to be your can high and brown is going to be your can low. The green twisted pairings, we're only gonna use one of these being the solid green wire. The solid green wire is the ground and we need that as a reference point in the CAN network. The green and white cable, which is power, isn't needed in this configuration, so we can cut that off as well. So now that we have our CAN high, CAN low and ground cables from our Victron RJ45, what we want to do is match that to the configuration on the multi-tap. So on the top of the multi-tap, you'll see that there is a power, can high, can low, and a ground orientation. And so we need to match these three cables into your multi-tap connector so that it'll insert appropriately. So these snap in with the lever towards the top for orientation. And you can see on the top here, once again, it's gonna be power, can high, can low, and ground. And so you just wanna match those in here. So all we do is push these in, and once they're in nice and solid, we're just gonna clamp these down. It's definitely nice to push these in with an additional tool if you have, say a pair of uh, small channel locks or something like that to make sure that you get a good connection. So now that we've created our Victron RBC cable, all that we need to do is place the RJ45 end into VECAN port one on the Servo Mark II, and the RBC end is going to snap into your multi-tap to make the connection to the RBC network between the two. It's really important as well on this CAN network to use one of the provided Victron terminators in the other VE CAN port one slot that's left open. So now that we've got the Servo Mark II connected up to the multi-tap for the RBC connection, another important connection between your Servo Mark II and the system is going to be in between the servo and the serv display. And so both of these have an ethernet port on them. And so what we're doing here is we're connecting the servo mark II to the serv display so that we can remote console in using the serv display to mirror what you would normally see on your Victron touchscreen, either, you know, touch 50, touch 70, or, you know, the same GUI that would be displayed on an Ecrano. This is really important because this gives you a full access to all of the features that you would normally have to be able to set in-depth settings outside of what the Garmin platform would allow. So to do that, all we're going to do is take a standard uh, RJ45 from Victron and plug it into the Ethernet port. It's really important to go into the Ethernet port. It's directly above the VE bus ports, and this is a common mistake, but we want to go into that Ethernet port, it has a little metal shroud around it, and then we're going to take the other end and go into the Ethernet port on the serve display, and it's as simple as that. 
The last thing to remember with the Serbo Mark II in this system is that you obviously need connectivity with the rest of your Victron components. This is going to be achieved through VE CAN 2, which we've assigned to the Lynx BMS CAN system. So you would simply use this the same way that you have been using it on previous VE CAN networks, where you'll utilize the ports on here to go out to other VE CAN devices, such as a Lynx BMS, appropriate solar charge controllers, and then we're going to terminate a leftover port in that network as well. Thanks for following along today as we talk about the Serbo Mark II and how it connects up to the Garmin system, both with RBC and over Ethernet. If you have any questions, then please reach out to our staff. And as always, we'll leave all of the appropriate links in the description below.